Orange County Jail, Orlando, Florida, 2008. Robin Adams, imprisoned on a marijuana charge, has developed a secret sisterly bond with Casey Anthony. The prison guard looking after both women, Sylvia Hernandez, has violated policy by allowing them time together. I didn't understand what was the problem of, you know, Casey talking with Robin or Robin talking with Casey. They were harming themselves, they weren't doing anything. So I let them talk with each other. Through secret letters and forbidden meetings, the two women have formed an almost sacred bond of trust. But as time passes, Robin begins to see cracks in Casey's otherwise steadfast denial that she harmed her daughter. I never got the feeling that Casey was worried about the whereabouts of Kaylee. In their letters, Casey Anthony mentions God often, seemingly to ingratiate herself to her spiritual new friend Robin and to possibly lure Robin deeper into her web. I believe that Casey found faith while she was incarcerated. When you are placed in vulnerable situations, uh, you tend to seek higher ground. And a lot of people call that a jailhouse faith. And if that's what it was, then so be it. That happens all the time. Do you feel as though she was sincere in her faith? I feel like she was, I feel like she was humble and I feel like she was sincere to the point of wanting to make peace with herself. There was nothing that Casey and I didn't talk about. Casey wrote to me, I was going to take Kaylee and move away. Unfortunately, my plans got beyond tangled when Zanny wouldn't tell me where she and Kay's were. I had asked her to take Kay's for a few days so I could put all of our stuff together, money I had saved, new clothes, new everything. That's why I waited to report her missing. If my son or daughter is missing, I'm not gonna wait to report them missing just because I'm trying to buy new clothes for them and you know make arrangements to move away. That in itself doesn't make sense. So that was a red flag. What did you mean? But this is only the beginning of behavior that starts to cast doubt in Robin's mind about the innocence of her close friend. In late November comes a potential breakthrough in the case. I saw like the first few minutes of the 11 o'clock news. Divers found a bag of bones in this river and they were questioning if it was possibly Kaylee Anthony. Sylvia let me talk to Casey and I said, hey, they just found a bag of bones in the river and they're questioning if the remains might be Kaylee's. Casey never hesitated. She said, that's not my daughter. She's like, they're just not looking in the right place. That's not her. And I was like, um, I don't wanna hear anything, Casey. That was when the flags started to come. But just weeks later, three-year-old Kaylee Anthony's skeletal remains are found wrapped in a blanket. When they gave her the news that they found Kaylee's remains, um, it was bad. They, had to, they took her to medical. Um, she couldn't breathe. She was just, she was having an anxiety attack, a panic attack. She didn't act like a, a regular mother where, oh, they found my daughter and she's dead, you know, crying, bawling, no, no, no. Her behavior at that time was like, oh, shit, I got caught. I knew information that no one else knew. Do you know what that information was? I do. <clears throat> when Orange County investigators asked what I knew about Kaylee Anthony, I said, I only knew what Casey told me. And they said, well, what was that? I said, just that they had found her in a laundry bag wrapped in a Winnie the Pooh blanket. That information wasn't even out. I didn't know that at the time. So Casey gave you information on Kaylee that hadn't even been released yet? That's correct. I didn't know really what was right or wrong anymore. 
We're talking about a little baby, a two-year-old baby girl, and her life was taken from her. After nearly nine months at the Orange County Jail, Robin Adams is preparing to be transferred to a federal prison in Tallahassee to serve out the remainder of her 10-year sentence on marijuana charges. But before she goes, she has one last question to ask Casey Anthony, one she has never asked her point blank. I asked her uh, the night that I was leaving, the night I knew I was being transferred. I said, did you have anything to do with this? And she paused for a minute, and she held my hand, and she just shook her head no. Did you believe her at that time? No. No, I did not. We never talked after that again. My intention was to turn over the letters because that's what was asked of me. That was demanded of me. I didn't have a choice behind that decision. I just, I never did it for the publicity of it or else I would have done it a long time ago before I was sentenced. <laughs>